Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, USMLEvideos.net. Once again, welcome to our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net, where you can find hundreds of videos as you prepare for USMLE examination. You can explore some of the most important points you must know before you take the examination. Tonight, I want to talk about ATP for a few minutes. First, let me give you some introduction. Everything in this universe needs some energy. Without energy, everything comes to a standstill. And as human beings, the processes that occur within our own body, the cellular processes and the organic processes like respiration or digestion or the endocrine system, all systems and processes within our body, they need energy and that's an issue. And, and everything we do outside of us is also something that needs energy in every instance. So energy is a very, very vital thing. Biological systems are called isothermic because they use chemical energy. Everything we eat is converted into chemical energy. That chemical energy is transformed in the body to various forms of energy. Electrical energy, where in SA node, the electrical impulse is created and passes to all parts of the body through AV node. So that is electrical energy that comes from chemical energy. The mechanical energy, when we uh, do respiration, for example, mechanical energy is produced, heat is generated, that mechanical energy is acting up. So everything in our human body is associated with energy. When the energy is not properly uh, supplied to the body, it results in conditions like marasmus. When you provide more energy than usual, it results in obesity because all those excess calories, they end up being stored within the body. Now, when we talk about biological systems, we also uh, fare well when we remember the general laws of thermodynamics. Remember, you studied uh, the laws of thermodynamics in physics, the first law. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another form. So energy in the human body, it is also transformed from one form into another form. So the first law of thermodynamics holds to human body as well. The second law of thermodynamics that states that with every process, its entropy, it increases. In every process, the total entropy of a system must increase if a process occurs spontaneously. Entropy, to put it simply, is randomness, the disorder. For with every process, the randomness or the disorder, it increases. That is the second law of thermodynamics. And both these laws, they apply to biological systems. Now, when we talk about the effect of uh, and the use of energy in human body, there are two things we need to remember, exergonic and endergonic. Exergonic is the process in which energy is released, whereas endergonic is the process when energy is actually absorbed. For example, in human metabolism, you remember there are two processes, catabolic processes and anabolic processes. In catabolic processes, we can say they are exergonic processes because as body in, in body as the catabolic process happen energy is being released whereas in anabolic processes we can say they are endergonic process because they take up energy as they build up things in human body so exergonic and endergonic are the two important processes we need to remember now 
endergonic processes and exergonic processes have to be coupled because endergonic processes they need energy exergonic processes they release energy now endergonic processes if they have to function properly they need energy so how can you supply endergonic processes with some form of energy simple bring the source the source is exergonic process so couple the exergonic and endergonic processes in that union you can actually made that supply and demand curve the supply exergonic process and the demand endergonic processes are meeting at that point you see for example oil starving countries and oil supplying countries like opec and oil conserving countries the rest of the world they meet at that supply demand curve in the same process in the same kind in human body the exergonic processes and endergonic processes they meet and in that coupling the things are being balanced now what we can observe from that issue is we need a substance when this exergonic energy is being transferred to endergonic processes we need a substance to do the job for example you take physical reactions in physics how the energy from one substance or one particle flow into a different substance or a different particle photons photons are the carriers of energy in most of the physical process now in the same way in human body between exergonic and endergonic processes atp does the job so when we talk about the role of atp its main function is to carry that energy phosphate from high energy potential substances to low energy potential substances so that is the most important function of atp they are the cellular currency some organisms like bacteria they use ferrous ion to ferric ion conversion to produce energy some like green plants you use photosynthesis to capture sunlight and use some carbon dioxide in order to form the glucose and uh, oxygen to release into the atmosphere so these processes they need atp and atp is adenine it is the combination of adenine ribose and three phosphates in its reaction in the cell it functions as the magnesium complex this is very very important to remember in biochemistry atp it works as a complex with magnesium ion when it uh, when it does its job within the cellular processes and um, now let us talk about uh, this energy transfer atp is not the most energetic substance in the body there are substances above it like phosphoenol pyruvate carbamyl pyruvate 13 bisphosphoglycerate or creatine phosphate so they are at the high energy level ATP takes energy from those substances and supply them to low energy substances like glucose 1 phosphate pyrophosphate or fructose 6 phosphate glycerol 3 phosphate these are the low energy complexes ATP it actually takes energy from high energy substances and transfers it to low energy substances now where does ATP form within human body there are mainly three important resources number one oxidative phosphorylation that is a greatest quantitative source of phosphate in aerobic organisms number two glycolysis you remember how two phosphates form from the formation of lactate from one molecule of glucose in glycolysis there two phosphates are formed so they can be used in the energy transfer in the same way citric acid cycle one phosphate is generally directed in the cycle at the succinyl thiokinase step 